Hi, my name is Matt Cyrus, and in this video series, we're going to look at how I designed this gauntlet. We're going to look at how I took inspiration from the Alien Isolation Tracker, as well as the Pit Boy, how I built it inside of Maya, also how I used Substance Painter uh, to texture, and then finishing it off, we're going to look at Marmoset Tool Bag um, for the rendering. If you're a Patreon supporter, these files will be available for you to download. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So this was the gauntlet uh, I designed in the end. Um, the brief was that I needed to make sure that um, it was a gauntlet, it fitted on a character's arm, um, and the idea was that this gauntlet had some kind of power that influenced the game mechanic. Now, um, I thought about doing uh, the Infinity Gauntlet, but everybody, everybody does that, uh, and it's kind of already out there at the moment. Um, so I thought about doing something that involved motion sensor and that sort of stuff. So I was looking at like Alien Isolation, um, mainly Alien Isolation actually, to be fair for this. Uh, as you can see here, the motion tracker from Alien Isolation, really good design, uh, really nice. Uh, I don't think this, I think this is a fan made one, I think. Um, yeah. But anyway, so I, I was looking at this design. Uh, having a look at the in-game stuff, uh, other stuff as well. I think this was one that I had to look at the most. Uh, but I needed to make it into some kind of gauntlet or to put onto the character's arm. So what I did was I looked at my other, other game that I enjoy playing, which is Fallout. I kind of thought about having this kind of like arm piece, which led me to this. So this is what it looks like without any textures on. And this was the final uh, product. And one of the cool things with ArtStation is I've got a Marmoset viewer here as well. So yeah, this is what I came up with. So I added all like the decals, um, all the information. Uh, all the panel work as well, which we're going to do not inside of Maya, but we're actually going to do this inside of um, Endu. Um, and yeah, but you could easily do this as a high poly model uh, and then bake it down, especially how I laid out the UVs. Okay, um, and yeah, so um, so to begin with, what I started off with was with this box unit. Now, if we look at the alien isolation. You can see that it's got the screen, it's got the buttons, um, you've got this back bit as well, uh, and then this looks like it's the battery pack. You've got a cable coming from it. So that's what I kind of did. So instead of having it like a big chunk, I did it as a, um, uh, yeah, as two separate side by side. So what I started off with was actually I took this reference here um, and this is just from the Unreal arm. So the Unreal mannequin. Uh, I think I got rid of him. I hope not. Where is he? He's missing an arm now. Uh, but I'll include this in the file. Um, it's just a standard um, Unreal size. Uh, I think he's six foot tall. Uh, mannequin that they use. And I just use him inside. I think it's a him. It's a robot actually. Um, and I just use it inside of Maya to um, use it for scale reference. Uh, like I said, he's a, like the robot is six foot tall. And he's 185, so we can check that by actually creating a measurement tool. If I just go into here, hit spacebar, let's get those two views up. Yeah, 183 centimeters. Okay, so I took his arm off and uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, like I said, uh, if you are a patron supporter, you can get these files and I will include the arm so you can have a go at yourself making your own designs. Um, yeah, so what I started off with, so I got the arm. Now, one thing I do want to do is when I'm modeling, I don't want to start accidentally selecting stuff. So what I what I can do is make sure this is uh, unselectable. So if we go to layers in the um, 
channel editors box here. If you can't see it, press A, uh, Control A, and that will uh, bring it up. Go create from layer. I'm just going to call this differently. And call this uh, arm ref. Click save. And if I click here, if I turn this into an R by just clicking on it, I can now no longer select it. I can select everything else, but I can't select this. So it's a good way of having layers, especially if you're working on characters uh, or things that have multiple uh, objects on top of them and you don't obviously combine them. So this is a good way of working. Okay. Well, let's just hide that for a minute. Let's have a look at this. Uh, ignore this. This is really messy. I've got one that's separated, actually. Ah, here we go. Okay. So, firstly, what I'm going to do is just going to create a new box. I'm just going to put it the size I want it. What is up with you? I know why. <laughs> I was modeling some furniture the other day and I needed to transform. So if this ever happens, it's because of the transform constraint. If you turn it off in the modeling toolkit, I should be all right. There you go. Let's do that. So I've got my shape of it. So I want to create this inset here, the screen. So what I'm going to do is grab the insert edge loop tool. All I'm doing is holding shift right click to do that. And you know I'm going to do a blue Peter moment because uh, if I spend, I think this took me two days from concept to build uh, to actually rendered. Um, so uh, I don't think I can get away with two days of video content of me modeling it. And making it so I might fast forward a little bit to this uh, okay so I've got my thing. yeah that's fine maybe let's bring this slightly out a bit and let's line these up so they're even distance now you could draw a plan of this and model from that. Um, I mainly do it by eye, but that's because I've been doing it for a long time, so I kind of do a lot of things by eye. Um, but there's multiple ways of working around this sort of thing. So all I did there was just extrude it, hit G, extrude again, hit it again, and there you go. I'm going to leave it there for the time being. Now, if I want to create this bit, um, I can do. Um, I, can just, I can grab this face, extract it, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this button on here so I can see the wireframe and I'm going to create a couple of insert edge loops. Now what I did there was I clicked on the option tab here. I'm going to change this to because I don't want to go too extreme with this because this is just going to be glass. And same there. And you can see that it's now evenly spread this out. And then what I'm going to do is so all I did there was select it and then hold control to deselect the edges I don't want. I'm just going to raise this up a bit so I get a bit more depth to it. 
Now, one thing I have noticed is I'm just going to freeze the transformations, center the pivot, delete the history. If you forget how to do that, you can go and watch my series on introduction to Maya. Uh, shameless plug there. But also, if you could go uh, control shift left click, it will create a um, icon for you. Move that up. And then what I'm going to do is just move this slightly up a bit. And then I'm going to use something called an append polygon tool. Select that edge, select that hedge, hit G or enter. Uh, and that will fill that hole. Uh, let's bring this back down. Okay, and one thing I am going to do is holding V, I'm just going to snap these verts down. So I'm not getting that kind of harsh edge there. Okay. So we got that. Uh, what else? Uh, we went with Beverly, yeah. Let's do this bit here. So, it looks like. Okay, so we got that. Now I'm going to clean some of this up uh, before I bevel it. Uh, that's just sitting on top. That's just sitting on. Well, most of this stuff is just floating geometry, actually. Um, can you imagine if I had to try and um, tidy all this up? It's uh, it's a bit of a nightmare, and. To be fair, on this first model here, this could be floating geometry as well. Um, no, it isn't. Actually, it's a button, so if you wanted to animate the button, no. So we are going to build this, actually, uh, because this is a button, you want to press the button, and if it was animated, especially because it's on the character, you want the button to animate it. Yeah, so we're, we're going to do it that way. Uh, but first, we're just going to clean up this model. So I'm going to use, just going to grab the edges. Like so. And I'm holding V to do this. And then I'm going to grab all the vertices. And I'm holding shift to grab most of my tools. Uh, don't merge the center because it does that. So merge vert. And you'll see that the vert went down from 352 verts. That doesn't make any sense. To 32. Let's have a quick look at something. There you go. 20 divisions. It's just one. Okay. So ignore what I just did. Because yours will be set to one. That's why it was weird. There's always something with me that you may have left on. Uh, what I'm going to do is just harden the edges. Okay, now I'm going to build this bit here. Uh, I can't remember how I did it, so let me just have a quick look. Okay, right. So let's grab a new square. And I'm just going to go and top view. Put wireframe on. So say that's. Mm, Uh, say this is the button.
One thing I will say, I do apologise. Uh, I do sound bunged up. Uh, I'm not ill. I'm just, uh, it's my hay fever's playing havoc with me today when I'm recording. Hey, hey, fever. Oh, wish it'd go away. Anybody, uh, yeah. Anybody who suffers from hay fever, I feel your pain. Okay. I'm just going to duplicate this because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called a boolean. Did I do it right? No, no. Make sure this is intersecting. Not all the way to the bottom, but enough. And select this one first. Go boolean. There you go. I don't need this bit. Now, the problem with this at the moment is an angle. So we need to clean it up. So we're just going to use the multi-cut tool. I'm holding, I'm pressing G when I'm ready. We don't need this. Okay. And what I'm going to do is, uh, quick tool. You can minus one. I'm holding B to snap that. Uh, I'm just going to do this the same one more time. Okay, and copy the original one and go minus one. Okay, so once I've got this, uh, I've done the minus one, I'm just going to select these, combine, and then make sure the verts are merged. And then I'm just going to move the pivot so it's down here, I'm just going to make it slightly bigger, down a bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the edges that I want to bevel, hit the bevel and turn this down to point 0.1 there you go okay now you're asking why didn't I bevel these is because I want this bit flush with here so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete that and I'm going to snap that to that vert there just go in top view and move this to where I want it so roughly about there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, delete these faces. And then I'm going to extrude. Same with this side. I hit G to repeat the tool and I'm going to do the same here and the same with the top one as well and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to merge those to the center snap it to there snap that one to there as well do the same here Do the same there. And then up there to there. Make sure the mer verts are merged. And then I'm just going to append the polygon here. 
There you go. Now I've got my inlet. Just going to do the same with this. Neat. Bevel. Point one. I'm just going to Make sure I was not selecting the bits that I don't want. And there you go. I've got my buttons. What I can do is okay. In the next video, we're going to look at how we can model these dials. We're also going to look at modeling this switch and making a design decision on changing it to look more like this switch here. We're also going to look at this battery box and how to model that. So that's going to be in next week's video. So I'll see you next week.